Hey, hello and welcome back. For sure you know this. You book a hotel and then you go there and your partner says, can we have a room with a nice view? Well, it's important because it could be a view to uh, the back of house podium with MEP stuff going on or, or a brownfield in the backyard. Or it's the view to the Eiffel Tower. It's a big difference. And if I would be in the position of designing a hotel, for example, then I would probably be very careful on how I choose the views, especially from the guest rooms and roof terrace and um, sky bar and, and so on. But this is not the only use. Think of, um, do I block the view with my building? Do I block the view in the city to a specific um, iconic landmark in the city? Or a stage design. Can I can everybody see everybody's city every seat can can they actually see the stage? Um, or other events on public squares. Public art. Can people actually see the object from that street or that street or this building or that building? View analysis is extremely important and I think it's a bit underrated or undervalued. And in this video we'll go through and look on a very basic the very very basic use within ladybug and then um, in the next video we'll probably jump back to our model to our project and i will also explain uh, a few real world scenarios probably where this is really useful or this was probably very useful all right let's jump right in oh membership shout outs i haven't done this for a while i'm super excited we have a new starter it's so hard to pronounce Diane Shwari Mete. Please uh, forgive me if uh, if it's completely wrong. Diane Shwari Mete. That's how I believe it should be pronounced. It's so interesting. I have this. I mean, it's a beautiful name, no question. But it's uh, we have really interesting names. But yeah, thanks a lot for joining. You don't have much here on your channel, but um, super excited that you joined my channel. I hope I hope you get something out of it. Just drop me a message um, either here on the channel or send me a, an email. The email is in my, my email is in my channel description. All right, let's jump into view analysis in Rhino. I prepared a very simple model. So we need this in order to understand it better. And we we'll go through, today we'll go through the view percentage and then next time visibility. Let's see, let's see. Maybe we can do both uh, just to compare the difference. At the moment, I just have a plane and a box. That's all I want to test at the moment. And I'm going to take this. As you can see already, again, Ladybug, always important. Now we don't need any um, weather data or whatever. It's really about view analysis to an analyze a building. For that, we don't need any weather data. We don't need weather data, wind data or anything like that. But as you know, underscore at the beginning means it's a uh, a mandatory input so view type resolution is is a mandatory input but it already has a default value so that's why it has an underscore at the end so you can put something in but you don't have to if you're happy with the default value which is, which is one we can uh, talk about this later the geometry geometry is the geometry you want to analyze and context is the geometry which is the context which is blocking views for example in that case it's very similar to the shadow analysis or sun hour analysis uh, grid size and it's also mandatory by the way the context is not mandatory here because you could, for example if it's a flat uh, space or if, if if an object is hovering in space and it's and there's no context um, offset distance this is how far you off the offset your um, your resulting mesh uh, geo block we need, we need to check it out what that means um, we'll, we'll go through all of this and we need a run button cpu count you basically can um, you can specify how many cpus are using your calculation power i always i don't use i don't just i use the default it's just leaves you one cpu for other things to do otherwise your computer might crash and um, you also have legend parameters we, we can talk about legend parameters when we get to the extras. We can go a bit into detail. Okay, this is my, let's let's see, this is my building. And we should also read what's in here. Evaluate the percent view to the outdoors or sky from input geometry through context. So 
basically it's the view from the object to the outdoors or to the sky. In that case, you have 100%, right? Hmm. It's not that simple. There's a different ways on how to calculate this. And that's why we need to go through a bit more in detail. But let's put this in here. So we need the, the geometry first. There can be more, of course, you can analyze more. The context, well, the context, we can actually put it in here. This is just this plane. It's a 100 meter by 100 meters plane. By the way, these studies really work best with simple models, simple massing. These are not made for very, very detailed uh, models. And I will put a run button here so we can see automatically what the output looks like. There's something missing. We need the grid size. I put a bit more. Grid size, that means the grid is 10 meters. I put a bit more at the beginning so it calculates faster. Resolution is how often this view, this view, how often the view vectors are divided. Let's let we'll have a look. And we need the view type. We just put it in here. Okay, that doesn't work. Did something wrong. Let's also take this here to zero. I'll close this so we don't need to see that. I will close this. What I want to do, I will, I would like to compare this a bit because. I think it's better if we have two objects next next to each other. I'll create here this a sphere. Okay, now it works. For some reason, it didn't didn't really work. I changed here, I changed geometry to B wrap. I also increased this, the resolution, no, the the grid, because it had this weird output, as you can see here. This happen. This happens if it says here hundred percent. This happens if everything is geometry and there's no context. There's something else to uh, really look at it. So we need to l understand the view type. But before that, let's let's read through the tool itself. Evaluate the, perc the percent view to the outdoors or sky from input geometry through context. Such view calculations can be used to estimate the quality of a view to the outdoors from a given location on the indoors, like a hotel to the outdoors. They can also be used on the outdoors to evaluate the openness of street canyons to the sky upwards, which has implications for the pedestrian experience as well as the rate of radiant heat loss from urban surfaces at the sky at night. So it gives an indication of radiant heat loss as well, especially in hot countries. This could be quite interesting. Note that this component uses the CAD environment race intersection methods, which can be fast for geometries with low complexity, but does not scale well for complex geometries or may test or many test points. For such complex studies, honeybee radians should be used. As I said before, don't use complex models. It just will take forever. But of course, if you have a lot of time. Now let's go for the view type because it's the next uh, important item. The, the view type, there are four different view types. And these are yeah, specified by the numbers. So um, the input text or in integer representing the type of view analysis to conduct. Choose from the following options. Horizontal radial, the percentage of the 360 horizontal view plane that is not blocked by the context geometry. We haven't yet put any context. So that's why it's the radial horizontal view 360 horizontal view plane that is not blocked by the context geometry and how do i understand that so if we look at the points if i lower the resolution maybe then it's much easier to understand so imagine now you have uh, these are my viewpoints these are the points where i calculate where, where i calculate the view i could put here a circle imagine there's a plane going through each of these that's a bit it's actually not very <laughs> It's not very um, good to look at Maybe if, I, if I reduce this quite a lot, but then you can see it's like, oh, from this point, a view plane of 360 degrees, there's no obstacle except for the building itself. So for example, here, this point, um, this, this, this circle here is the, this point is the center for this circle. The building itself, yes, blocks the view, but there's no other context. I want to test something because I want to know what if what if my buildings are also the context. Let's see that. Let's check that out. It's very different. Now you see that blue is 100% is on the top. This is because there's no obstacle. So there are other view types. Let's check the other one. Let's check number one. 
horizontal 30 degree offset. The percentage of the 360 horizontal view band bounded on top and bottom by a 30 degree offset from the horizontal plane. 30 degrees corresponds roughly to the vertical limit of the human peripheral vision. Um, okay, so imagine you stand completely straight and you look into this 360 degree plane, then your peripheral vision picks up basically a, a cone in the section of your eye, which is 30 degrees up and 30 degrees down. Maybe I can explain that with a scribble. Actually, in that case, it's just 180 degrees. So that's around 50%. You see 50% of everything, but actually don't. But then I have an offset of 30 degrees up and down. So it becomes like this kind of... wedge shape. I hope it's more clear. Let's just test it. Let's just go through. But I'm gonna remove this here because we will probably see how that affects everything. You see that what happens is that now on the on the on the on the higher up you have you see more percentage because the plane has an effect on your view on this like 30 degrees looking downwards. If I would put uh, let's let's copy this. Active view sometimes it really annoys me with this uh, shadow plane. If I would put now both planes here in this context, then you see that and now it's also restricting a bit this highest building. If I put this further down, you see, okay, it starts to influence. All right, um, we have another one. It's number two, the the spherical. This the percentage of the sphere surrounding each of the test point that is not blocked by the context geometry. This is equal to a solid angle and gives equal weight to all portions of this of the sphere. Okay, let's try it out. It's very similar because we have this context. If we remove the context, then of course it's going to be 100% everywhere. But because we have the context, we have the plane as a context on the lower end, that's why it's actually blocking the view to the to the ground. So imagine you have um, a whole sphere around this. Third one, actually, sorry, it's five. We have five different ones. Sky exposure. The percentage of the sky that is visible from each of the test points. This is distinct from sky view, which is the amount of sky seen by a surface. Sky exposure is equal to a solid angle and gives equal weight to all portions of the sky. Okay. Well, let's let's test it out so we see what's happening. You can just you can just, just test what it is. A hundred percent, of course, on the top with blue. And uh, here you can see a bit four sky view, the percentage of the sky that is visible from the ge geometry surface. This is distinct from sky exposure, which, which treats each part of the sky with equal weight. Sky view weight, weights the portions of the sky according to their projection into the plane of the surface being evaluated. So sky view for a horizontal surface would give more importance to the sky patches that are overhead versus those near the horizon. So there's this difference between sky exposure and sky view. Now there's the offset. You can put this in here if you want. Imagine you just pull out these dots more, this like viewpoints, and that's why it becomes more and more and more blue because these have less influence from the building itself. So it really affects um, your view. I will just remove this here. I mean, that is interesting if you imagine you have uh, balconies on it. Geo block. This is if you want to set the input geometry as opaque and set to false to discount the geometry from the calculation and only look at context. So it's it's the opposite 
kind of. So if I put this to true, sorry, false. Let's let's just see how what happens. True is the same as before. False is 100%. But everywhere else is something. So if I put now an additional context. Oops, why does this not work? And of course I need to change um, the, 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 the type because now I'm checking the sky exposure. Hoppala, that didn't pick it up. Sorry. Of course, because this is a... Sorry. So many mistakes today to put here b-wrap now because i have different and now this this will have an influence yeah now if if i hide this then you see that this building has some influence on our geometry quite a lot actually if i go back here to two to three this is the sky the sky exposure then you see it has some influence on this side but that's pretty much it for me, the most important is this one, this the view type two, which kind of, ah, uh, sorry, the uh, view type one, which I feel is for me the most uh, useful because it the, it tries to imitate the human peripheral vision. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, become a member if you want to support my channel. Um, yeah. See you in the next video.